hope I sound okay. I don't have a mic on this camera right now and we're in the street, so I don't know. We'll see how it, how it works out, I guess. And there becomes but one law in the underworld jungle. Get Carter. I know Get Carter is technically Newcastle, but in my earlier searching of rooms to play in, Newcastle's rooms all looked kind of trash. Had I known ahead of time, I totally would have booked at least a few days there to go to like <laughs> Get Carter locations under this like stupid video idea I had. But Liverpool will suffice. This behind me is St. Luke's Church, which on the surface, just kind of walking around, looked cool like your standard, just cool older church that you'll see in England and the rest of Europe. But this one's a little different. It was built in 1832, or it was like finished being built in 1832, apparently. And it was a standard church, doing standard church stuff until 1941. Exactly, exactly. It's a cool spot, man. Then, World War II happened, and the Blitz of Liverpool, 1941. And this entire establishment was absolutely eviscerated. Inside crushed and all that was left was the facade. But rather than rebuild it and bring it back to its former glory, it stayed eviscerated, stayed bombed out, became colloquially known as the Bombed Out Church, and now is kind of almost like a memorial of sorts and also kind of a hub of interesting conventions and newer art and newer artists to kind of come together. I think we got a chili cook-off here. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool, actually. Bombed out church. There you go. Hate drives the hunter. Now we have work to do. Carter was a killer by profession. Now he is a killer by instinct. Got extra chilly in the evening. This right here is the Genting in Queen Square. Genting is one of the few big casino kind of companies that usually has one in every major city. This is the first one I've been to though, and I guess it's the only consistent cash game that really runs in Liverpool from what I could see. And this is a small casino too, so I guess the, the poker scene isn't quite as vibrant here as it is in some towns. Step into the office here I guess, and uh, hopefully we run up something. Maybe recap some hands. We'll play it by ear. I feel odd doing these uh, mid-session reviews. It seems unlike me. <laughs> Over here, we have boop, radio needle or something. It's on top of a university and I guess, I don't know, some radio station broadcasts out of there. I don't know how touristy it is, but it's definitely the tallest thing here, so I assume it means something. The game was real kind of nitty and blech. me being a pretty tight pre-flop player kind of just adds to it. But luckily, two loose passive folks came and then we persuaded the world to get into a round of straddles which became kind of a pseudo just general straddle thing. So the game definitely picked up and we finally actually started playing hands and getting things going. Uh, first hand of note, we have the straddle is on where on the button it folds to me. We have jack five of clubs. Decide to open. I haven't raised a hand at all the entire time I've been there for about maybe an hour 15 minutes, hour 20 minutes at least. Just felt like it was worth it. Um, obviously not a tier one hand, but big blind and straddle called. So pot 45 going in, or 46 going into the flop. And the flop comes king, queen, four with two clubs. And it checks to me. I decide to check it as well. I don't want to get blown off my equity in that spot because I just have a bear flush draw really with odd four card back doors against folks that I'm not entirely sure about yet. I'd rather not put money behind, take my free card, and it adds a lot of deception because I think a lot of people barrel their draws a little too much. Turn is the six of clubs, so we hit we hit Jin Jin, and the uh, big blind, who was essentially the small blind in the straddled hand, uh, bets out 25. I raise it to 75 with my flush, and he calls fairly quickly. 
and the river is another queen. He just goes right for his chips, and I just know, ugh, ugly, ugly, ugly. I just know he has a boat here. He bets 105, which is about half pot, maybe slightly higher. I, I think I'm forced to call, like, I, just because you're not, you've only played with the person, if they've played pretty snug and he had an iPad playing online poker tournament. So like, I, I don't think he does that, that bet with less than a boat. And calling there confirms it, uh, he did have the king queen. You're a big man, but you're in bad shape. With me, it's a full-time job. Now behave yourself. I wonder if it was a mistake though. I mean, half pot, I don't have to be right X amount, and I literally haven't played a hand with him ever, so I think I'm kind of forced to call. But I definitely it was a crying call. I, I felt I felt bad about it. So I wonder, you know, those river spots where you know they're not bluffing and you're priced is a common thing a lot of us deal with in poker, and um, the best ones make that right decision more often to save that money, so I wonder if, if that was one of those spots for me. I think here I need to call. The first time playing against him, I think I have to call. But if I'm wrong, please let me know. I, I, I love being told I'm wrong. I, I have thick skin. Mimi official early morning selfie of phone. 5.30 now, that's when the game ends. They do their final three hands at 5.15. I don't know, kind of trivial spots. Made a bit, bled a bit. At the end of the day, the literal day, almost exactly 400, 404 we lost. Other than just to put a bow on it, there's really not much to this, so. Yeah, end of the session, end of the Liverpool game. Ended up, I think, up four to five hundred for the sessions here. Um, but I'm still waiting for that, like, five to six, you know, in a row where you just bang, 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 get on a nice hot streak. Still waiting for that. Excuse me, pigeon. All right, catch it. Get Carter before Carter gets you.